There's a girl in the corner with tear stains on her eyes from the places she's wandered and the shit.
golf meeting. Golf meeting. Right on the start of the road, I guess. I guess there's a lot of you are at work. And we want to welcome you and thank you for joining our broadcast this morning. We look forward to getting you to the live. We'll also have a recording later for people to watch and view here. Stick with us and share with your friends if you're able to join us. Us today we're doing a little audio test. That's the audio reason. Talking delay, so I'm going to keep talking for just a few more minutes here. So hopefully, no one here that the sound is up and running. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning. This is the first general ATF that we've had in a long time. I'm going to give you a little bit of a chance to share with us. Hope that everyone had a great weekend. If you're looking at your calendar, make plans to attend Friday Night Lights this Friday. Legacy Eagles are in the bar. Away in Lindsay, Texas. That'll be another road trip we will bring to you live this weekend. Hopefully, our three legged screen will be back in action as we have Jorge. Jorge. All right, well, we're going right, to kick it back over to the music, music and uh, we will. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If you wouldn't mind going ahead and grabbing um, some coffee snacks and having a seat, we're going to start in about two minutes. <coughs>
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here this morning. My name is Nicole Williams. I am the uh, president this year for the PTF, so I'm so happy to see all these great faces. Um, I'm going to start off our meeting by introducing our amazing headmaster, Mr. Bill McGee. He's going to say, um, he's going to open us in prayer and say a few words, and then we'll get started on the rest of the business. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole, for calling me amazing. You read the script really well. Thank you for that. Uh, well, before I pray, I'll just ha I have to share this uh, funny with you. Um, I got up this morning and my wife goes, ooh, that's a bright shirt. I think the 70s called and they want their shirt back. <laughs> and I said, well, now this is, this is not exactly legacy green, but I needed some green shirts when I moved here. And every year, um, Dillard's has a sale 40% off of 50% or something. So I usually buy all my shirts for the year and I just like the bright green and I thought on a Monday morning, we all need to wake up a little bit. So that's the reason for the lime green shirt. All right, so let's pray. Father, we pause this morning um, with hearts that are just full of gratefulness and thanksgiving as we consider the many blessings uh, that we receive, most of which, Father, really all of which we don't deserve. And yet you have uh, smiled on our school. You have granted your favor to our families, and you have given us a great privilege of coming together as a community and glorifying your name and praising your name at every opportunity. And so, Father, we, we don't take for granted that privilege. We um, rejoice together as a covenant community. And we ask for your forgiveness when we fail to live up to your excellence. Father, I thank you for a great start to the school year. I thank you that you have protected us. And I just pray that you will continue to put your hedge of protection around our school. Father, not just for external threats, but also the internal ones as well. Father, I'm thank you, thankful for this group of women and men who have taken time out of their schedules to come together to learn more about the PTF, to um, explore opportunities to serve the families and the faculty and staff here at Legacy. And I thank you for their heart for service, and I pray that you will bless their efforts. Father, as, as we um, conduct our business this morning, May our thoughts be pure, may our intentions be right, and may we seek to honor and glorify you in all that we say and do. And it's in your son's name I pray, amen. So Nicole said I have a, a few minutes. She said I could take as much time as possible. I said, oh no, no, never give me an un... Uh, bounded time to speak because we may be here a while so I did say I would take no more than five minutes because I know we have a lot uh, of business to take care of and a lot of reports that are going to be much more interesting than mine but I do want to uh, share with you just some initial thoughts especially about the role as I see it of the PTF many of you know that I've been in education for 30 uh, this is my 36th year now and 26 years ahead of school so I've I've worked with organizations like this for most of my career um, and I, I can tell you unequivocally that you play a huge role in setting the tone for our school and establishing or reinforcing what I uh, mentioned at uh, the, uh, my inaugural address, and that is a covenant partnership. I really believe, and I've shared this with Nicole and her leadership team, that the PTF 
plays a vital role. Their primary role is building a sense of community. And one of the things I did share with them that I want to share with, with all of you today is I want you to, in your mind, see that is your primary role and not raising money for the school. That doesn't mean that raising money is not important, but that's a secondary role, okay? I really believe PTF should be building relationships, reinforcing that partnership between the home and the school. And if you can do that, the money will take care of itself. So you're gonna hear probably some fundraising ideas that the PTF is gonna share with you. And all that is well and good, but I don't want you to see your role as the primary fundraiser. We have a primary fundraiser, and she's back there. And, uh, Deanna uh, is, is, she's hired to raise money. I'm hired to raise money. Shannon is hired to raise money. So we'll do our job so that you don't have to focus on the money. You can focus on the relationships because I really believe that's the role of a PTF. It's that link. It's that, that, uh, that uh, glue. It's whatever you want, whatever metaphor you want to use. You are, you are bringing the home and school together through volunteer opportunities, through uh, events like we had, I guess, the PDQ evening. What a fun evening that was. My wife and I just thoroughly enjoyed uh, that. Through all the different things you do throughout the school year, you are stre strengthening that bond, that covenant partnership that I talked about. And I want to say it's already here. There is a sense of a partnership already at Legacy. But just like in everything else, we can improve on that. Uh, we can make the, that bond even stronger. And so I want to encourage you and challenge you to think of ways, how can we strengthen that bond? Uh, because there are, you know what, in this room, there are lots of really good ideas. And so I want to encourage you to share those with the PTF leadership. My experience with them in the short time I've known them, they, are, they would welcome your suggestion and welcome your input and welcome your participation and leadership. So uh, please, if you have ideas, uh, we've already talked to a couple of the guys back there. There are uh, some ideas about how we can get the dads more involved, um, which sometimes can be a challenge because dads are really good at just letting their wives, the moms, take over and do things because you all are so good at it, okay? And I realize that. But we do need dads here for no other reason that the kids need to see that dads are interested in education too. And so I'm looking forward to, to the ideas and pursuing some activities where it's just a dads only um, group, whether it be a Bible study, whether it be a, a service opportunity, I think we need to get the dads involved more so. And ladies, y'all can help us with that by encouraging your husbands to be involved in the school and saying, hey, Mr. McGee's gonna have this event or the PTF's gonna have that event, you need to be there. And uh, so any, any way you can help us get that going, uh, we are very open and very interested in that. So how am I doing, five minutes, is that about right? Okay, all right, well thank you for being here at this, I guess the first public PTF meeting uh, looking forward to working with you. Y'all, as I said at the inaugural address, we have a terrific school. We've got great faculty, staff, leadership. We have great kids. You're doing a great job of raising your children. I am so impressed. Keep up the good work. We hope you want to be a part of the PTF, because guess what? You are. You're a parent at the school. So you are on the PTF. There's no sign up. There's no fee to pay. You're in. So we're glad you're here. <coughs> this is our mission statement. Um, it's a lot on the slide, but basically it is um, kind of um, mirroring what
until you can get them back. Good morning, it's great to see you. So as uh, Mr. McGee said, we are fostering community, and so a great way is the ministry program. Um, and we're gonna start with the prayer groups. I oversee a couple different things in ministry. One is the virtual prayer groups, which was a struggle for me to get out of the box of having a meeting. And uh, just to recap um, how this started last spring, um, was when the virtual prayer group started. And we used to have a moms and prayer group on campus and uh, it just sort of evaporated uh, early last fall, which was really curious to me. So I tried to force a new group starting and nothing happened. And January came and it was on my heart and on my mind, we've got to have a prayer group or a Christian school, right? We all want to pray. And I tried and just kept running into closed doors. So it was really on my heart that we needed to have something, but I couldn't get anything started. And right before spring break, my phone started ringing like crazy. And my preschooler started thinking I was losing it because he'd be home at 2.30 and the phone would ring. I was like, Charlie, someone else just called. And God's tapping them on the shoulder and saying, you need to be praying. You need to be praying for the families of legacy. And then I get another phone call. The teachers aren't being prayed for anymore. And they miss the note cards in their mailbox. We need to pray for our teachers. We're building a new building. Karen, another phone call. We need to be praying for that new building. And the phone calls just came pouring in. So we know it's God's group. He raised up the prayer warriors. We had over 115 um, that were part of our virtual prayer groups last year. And uh, we're just resetting it this year and launched it at Eagle Expo. We're covered in prayer. We'll have one or two meetings on campus that are totally optional. But the neat thing about virtual prayer groups is everyone can be a part. So we need dads. We need that strength in uh, the godly order and the dads praying. We can invite grandparents to join us. Teachers can be a part of this. Since there's no set meeting time where certain groups of people cannot be there, everyone can be a part. And you'll be a part of a group, and we'll share within our email teams that you're part of this group. And if we ever have a meeting on campus, you'll get to meet those that you're praying with. So prayerfully consider being a part of these groups. Um, as I just quickly mentioned, there are families and teachers, and you can pray specifically for uh, the set of teachers, your children. If you're in middle school, you can lift up middle school teachers or upper school, and you'll get assigned teachers' names based on how many people sign up for each group. And um, also know that every family at Legacy is being prayed for. So your family, your children, and you and your spouse are being prayed for by name. And... Um, that's really powerful, and a lot of people felt those prayers last spring. We need the power of prayer. We have so much I mean, authority in our prayers and so much protection that provides. So please consider that. And we'll go on to the other thing I'm responsible for is the Women's Bible Study. It starts tomorrow, so you're hearing about it just in time if you haven't heard yet. Uh, we will launch tomorrow the Armor of God Bible Study by Priscilla Shire. And this is open um, to all moms on campus. We start at 9.30, and you just have to show up tomorrow. Or you can email me if you need more information about that. But it'll be about a seven-week study um, with a very, very serious but um, strong topic of putting on our armor every day to do battle um, against the enemy because we will prevail, and we know that. So um, I encourage you to not grow weary, encourage you to lift each other up, to be there for each other. We have an incredible group of families here. Um, but as the one in charge of And um, I would just challenge you to prayerfully consider to the table and um, on the other side of that if you're saying yes you may be blocking someone else from doing it if you're trying to do everything for fear that no one else will do it so just prayerfully consider where God would have you serve he's got a calling and a place for everyone here in his school and um, we're excited to just join in and hold arms together and um, just strengthen this body it's it's um, 
a community and we all believe in Jesus Christ and we don't apologize and there's a lot of power in that. So thank you for being here and for your faith. prayer groups I mentioned already and so now I'm going to introduce to you Kristen and Jennifer with teacher appreciation thank you thank you um, I am co-chairing with Jennifer the nice thing about a co-chair is you get to divide and conquer and God puts the right people together because we have complementary skill sets and mine is talking and hers is organizing and our list keeper so that is fantastic so uh, we're really happy to be here and I know from visiting with several of you this morning a lot of you are new moms and I'm so happy to see you here because I was a new mom in fourth grade and it can be really overwhelming especially if you come from public school how do you get plugged in a little intimidating and I just have to say that this committee is a really great place to start because you are dealing with moms and dads that want to serve the school and our teachers and staff and administration. And the good news is they're happy to see you. They are thrilled with everything we do. And it's a great way to just show appreciation because for those of you who've even been here for the first month, our teachers are phenomenal. Our administrators, our staff are so committed that this is a real privilege to serve on this committee. Um, so here's some of the things that we do. Really and truly, there's a lot that we do, and we try and oversee everything with the perspective of blessing our teachers and our administration and our staff and making them feel loved and appreciated. So we do that in a variety of different ways. Um, we do a teacher appreciation week, which this year will be the month of Valentine's Day, so that's gonna be really fun, and I'll do a little deeper dive into all this. Um, we do teacher appreciation events throughout the school year. We provide monthly treats. It's like a little surprise that we put in their mailbox. Um, we recognize all of their birthdays. And uh, we just try and organize anything that happens throughout the year that we recognize as an opportunity to make them feel special. Oh, did it change? It's changing on me here. There we go. So really and truly, like I said earlier, this is a fantastic committee in which you can become involved. And it is a great committee for dads as well. It was fun for my husband to get involved and I'll share you a little bit more on how he did that. One of the things that's really fun is we create monthly treats for the teachers and they look forward to these. It's a little surprise that they will find in their mailbox. And we always do something clever. Pinterest is our friend. <laughs> so it's a, it's a lot of fun. You are the highlight of our children's, um, of LCA. In April, we might give them an umbrella that says, thank you for showering our children with love. Um, and it's a really fun way. Jen and I will organize some, um, actual work days where you can help us put together these treats because a lot of them can be done in advance where we can do a couple months at a time. It's a great time of fellowship where we'll get together and you can meet other moms and dads that are like-minded and wanting to share. So we try and make those really fun. We try and organize them in advance and uh, we just do that as a little monthly treat for the teachers. Now, treats aside, their favorite day by far is Sonic Day. And we literally, for all the staff, teachers, administrators, we have got a list of their favorite Sonic drink. How many is that, Jen? She has got a spreadsheet and labels for 125 people that are going to get their favorite Sonic drink hand-delivered by a smiling PTF face. So if I were gonna tell you on committee to get a, a, a committee and service opportunity, that is a fun one. And that's a fun one for dads. My husband and I would do that together. And um, we really organize it in an in a easy way where one of us will go get the drinks, bring them to the lower school or the upper school. They all have a label on them and we give you a map and we give you a cart. And we do get special requests, Can I, especially in lower school, can I deliver to my son or daughter's room? And, um, that's really fun when your kid's face lights up going, oh, you're bringing my teacher the Sonic drink. So how we manage that is we choose, we've chosen the second Tuesday of every month to be our Sonic drink day, and we send out a sign-up genius. 
and we're looking for between seven and eight people. This year with our school expanding, especially the upper school expanding, we're probably gonna ask for more volunteers than we have last year and a reserve list because we understand that last minute, you may have signed up you know, two weeks in advance, but darn, you, your morning just did not go the way it needed to go for you to deliver sonic drinks. So we're gonna probably look for a few more volunteers in that area. Our first one is tomorrow, and so we're, we're covered for tomorrow. Um, but if your name and the Nicole's going to talk a little bit more about getting on the volunteer lists. If your name and email address is on the core volunteer list for LCA, you will receive our sign of geniuses for things like Sonic Day. So you just really want to make sure that you coordinate that, and, and Nicole will tell you a little bit more about that. As you may have found out, the teachers have what we call a half day work day. So that's the, the early release days for us. The teachers don't get early release. They're here diligently working um, in their groups as a time of fellowship and a time of learning and reflection. And as a PTF, we provide lunch for them on that day. Uh, we will have it catered in, but more often than not, it is PTF that is serving the food. So we'll have like Spring Creek Barbecue, although they served. We'll have Rosa's Cafe to do Mexican, but it's actually PTF volunteers serving the taco bar, for example. Um, we also have a decorations committee. So on those half days, this is again a really sort of easy way for you to get involved. You drop off your child, 9.30 to 10.30 we ask you to come by because we always have a theme. Um, for the Spring Creek Barbecue Back to School, we did a cheerleader football back to school theme that was really fun. So we had our core group of decorators come out. And then we have another uh, group, volunteers, that come in and serve and help clean up. So again, that's really hands-on. And I tell you what, you get a lot of smiles and hugs from teachers and administrators on that day. In the lower school, we ask um, the grade levels 4 through K to provide um, desserts, about 15 desserts, and we do a lovely dessert table, and the room mom coordinator for that grade level will organize um, getting those desserts to us. So that's a nice way for lower school to be involved as well. So our big event of the year is Teacher Appreciation Week, and last year they had a really fun, um, they had a really fun theme where our teachers were the superstars and the year before that and we had we literally had a red carpet on they came into school on monday morning of teacher appreciation week and there were volunteers yes there were volunteers taping down red carpets <laughs> into the teachers lounges and we just made them feel like stars and we created a runway for them and we created that theme throughout the year throughout the week we did that uh, the year before superheroes fortunately this year it is during valentine's week so uh, we're really going to be um, encouraged to just really love on our teachers that week. Again, we will send out sign-up geniuses, which is the best way to get involved. And really, um, as a school, it's a nice way to encourage your children to appreciate your teachers as well. And to reiterate something that Mr. McGee said, um, especially those of you who may have come from public, there's often a lot of pressure to buy things for your teacher during Teacher Appreciation Week. That is not the point or the heart of the spirit of Teacher Appreciation Week at Legacy. It is to love on and appreciate our teachers. And so much of that is just a, a, a kind note. Um, so we will work on that. Don't, don't, uh, don't dread that in terms of being a burden on you. We're gonna make that really fun and really easy for you and your children. So thank you. Really thrilled to be doing this uh, for the school this year. And uh, we look forward to seeing some of your faces at some of these opportunities. And now we're going to bring up, oh, the next slide. Yeah. Jennifer Barnes was hoping to be here today, but she wasn't able to. So Nicole is going to come up and talk a little bit about how to get involved in volunteering. I'm a little shorter than Jennifer. You'll just have to make do. Um, so this is what our volunteer coordinator does. Um, she is the one who maintains this massive database. The way to get in on this database is just to simply go online. It's uh, legacyca.com forward slash volunteer. There's a very easy form. You put in your name, your email, and then you click on anything that interests you. Once you've done that, those lists go out to the appropriate chairs for those different volunteer opportunities 
and they put you on their list for when they need volunteers. So, for instance, like Jennifer said, for teacher appreciation, you'll get an email anytime there's a sign up. And if you're able to help, then sign up. If you can't, then look for the next one. Um, there's no pressure, but you know, we'd love to have you involved, and um, it's a great way to get plugged in and meet more people. So, um, but these are some of the things that um, Jennifer's responsible for. Um, the main thing is just, you know, providing opportunities for you and maintaining that information to the appropriate people. So I thought this was kind of funny. We already have enough PTA volunteers, said no one ever. So that's about right. We always need more volunteers. So, you know, the more you want to do, if you have time to do it, we welcome that. So please feel free to sign up for as much or as little as you want to do. The Spirit Shop. So these ladies, their, their big events kind of occur some in the summer. Um, they do their used uniform sale in the summer, and they need a lot of volunteers for that. Um, Eagle Expo, as you all probably saw, is a little crazy in the Spirit Shop, and they actually, um, a couple of our other PTF members helped with an upper school portion of the, the um, Spirit Shop this year, which went really well, so we'll probably be doing that again next year. Um, Grandparents Day, that's coming up. And um, those grandparents like their spirit wear. And there's some grandparent t-shirts and things available. So um, they're always looking for volunteers to help during that as well. Um, and then they do have a tent sale, the first home game, which most of you probably saw. Um, and then they always need help stocking, folding. If you like to fold, you know, go see those ladies. Oh. I'm sorry. And then their hours. I wanted to make note of their hours. Um, they are open every Wednesday in the morning from 8 to 9, and then the afternoon from 2.30 to 4. So Grandparents Day. Um, for those of you that are new, it is a, a really fun day for our preschool through sixth grade. Um, they get to bring, their grandparents are invited, special friends are welcome to come if grandparents aren't able to be here. Um, they get to show them around the room. There's a big assembly. It is a fun day, and they get to leave at lunch if, if they want to and go have lunch with their grandparents or special friend. Um, so there are many, many opportunities to volunteer, from signing up, um, dads helping with parking. Um, we shuttle, I mean, as you know, our campus is kind of spread out as far as parking goes, and the, the assembly is over in the upper school gym initially. So. You know, we bust the grandparents over if they don't want to walk, and then we bust them back over here to the lower school after. So there's a lot of coordination that goes into that and a lot of opportunities to serve that day. So consider that as well. Um, we do a, a, a photograph for them as well with their grandparents, um, the kids, and then the school actually mails that to the grandparents, which is phenomenal. Um, and I don't know if you saw any of the pictures beforehand. There were a few of those in that slideshow. So if you have a knack with a camera, we're always looking for someone, you know, a couple volunteers to take photos as well. Um, the library. So um, the week of Grandparents uh, Day, that week we have a book fair in the library. And so the classes have scheduled times where they get to come in and purchase books. Um, they're always looking for volunteers. A lot of grandparents get involved in that. Um, parents, it's very simple to run the registers and help them set up and break down. On Grandparents Day, they typically move it in here, and so um, they'll also need volunteers that day to help. So consider that. Um, these are some other opportunities that are available. Um, we have uh, Tracy Todd manages our meal makers. Um, basically, if there's a, someone who's had surgery, a baby, um, a loss in their family, um, really anything where we feel like we can reach out and help them. Um, she reaches out and they set up a care calendar and we provide meals to that family for whatever needs they have. So that's an easy way to get involved if you like to cook or you love to serve in that aspect. Um, we also have a golf tournament every year. Um, it's a lot of fun in golfers and run around a golf cart um, outside. So that's always a fun thing to do. Then we have Lost and Found, which seems to grow as the year goes on. Um, we have a sweet lady who takes care of that, so she sorts things. If you put phone numbers in it, she'll text you that it's there. I mean, she's amazing. So if you like to get in and get you know, into the dirtiness of uh, Lost and Found and lunch boxes and whatnot, she is always looking for help there. 
Um, here's some immediate needs we actually have. We're looking for volunteers to do these things. Um, there's a few bulletin boards in the, in here in the lower school that um, the uh, administration and staff would like to have kind of changed out a little more frequently. So if you have a gift in, in doing that, or you used to be a teacher and you love to do bulletin boards, um, that is a need we have there. Um, you would need to get on a ladder, so if that's a deal breaker, then you know, understand. Um, the lower school workroom, so the teachers are always in there frantically, you know, getting their copies done, laminating, cutting, and sometimes things just get a little unorganized. So they asked if we had someone who might come on a weekly basis and just kind of straighten up in there and make sure that there's supplies that are low, that you bring that to someone's attention so that they can get that cleaned up. Um, the upper school commons, so this is a new need. The high school has asked if if we could provide them with a couple of volunteers who would come on a, a regular basis, whether that's once a week, twice a week, um, once a month, they're just needing someone to come in and maybe work on some projects for teachers, um, just have an adult present in the room, you know, you wouldn't have to discipline any students, but sometimes just having an adult there, students might behave a little differently. Um, not our students, of course, they're amazing, um, but that is also a, a current need that they have at the school. Uh, Mr. McGee spoke a little bit about this. We are getting a, an LCA dads group going, a men's group, a grand, grandparents group, a granddad's group. So these are some, some things we've talked about, um, helping with morning car lines, having dads out there opening doors and welcoming maybe once a month or every Friday or something like that. Um, a men's breakfast, we're trying to get that set up as well. Um, just a general help at LCA events. So things like I mentioned, grandparents day, it is a huge help to have someone out there just directing them where to park. They may not have been here before. They don't know where to go. So it's, it's helpful to have someone, you know, show them the right way and show them where to go um, in the parking lot. Of course, fellowship events. Um, and then bad weather dismissal helps. We have had instances with, here in, at our school where there's been a huge ice storm come in and the roads are getting really bad and so the school has decided to release early. And we actually had a group of dads that came up and helped the kids to the cars and all of that that day just on a whim. And so it's nice to have a group that they can go to with needs like that. Um, okay, so at this point I'm going to introduce Melissa Nespel, who's in charge of decorating and fundraising. Hi, y'all. Thank you guys so much for coming this morning. How awesome to have a gymnasium or cafetorium or whatever we call this full of people that are looking for ways to plug in and help. That's, that's pretty awesome, especially for someone who's always looking for people to help. So, <laughs> um, I have um, just, we've just actually come off our first spirit night, which I think you all um, maybe heard about PDQ spirit night. That's just one of the many ways that we um, have found to have the community help us in fundraising. There's several ways that we do that. I'm going to go through it very briefly and I'm more than happy to meet with you individually if you have any specific questions. I know we're pressed up against time. Um, we have several ways we raise money for the school and the monies can be used in a variety of different ways. Uh, anything from we bought new push carts for the spirit or the sonic drinks one year. One year the PTF funds actually paid for the the marquee outside that has what's happening at this week at Legacy. So there's a lot of ways we use these funds, blessing our teachers, obviously, with our um, luncheons. So it's just a great way for us to, to have some extra funds come in for blessings, basically. Uh, box tops for education. I don't know if you guys have done that at past schools. This is something we're getting ready to kick off the new fall. We have two campaigns, one in the spring and one in the fall. Um, and that's getting ready to kick off, I think, in the next week. And you'll be seeing this if you have a eighth grader or below, they'll be bringing home one of these baggies. Just as a reminder, what I do with mine, I put it on a clippy and put it on my refrigerator, and that way as I see something with a bo box top on it, I can cut it off, put it in. A uh, great way to volunteer is to help cut those box tops. We have a wonderful, wonderful lady, uh, Shelly Warren, who coordinates this whole program for us, and she needs people to help specifically twice a year with those box tops, but also just a coordinating uh, campaign, but keep an eye out for the box top program. We use some um, partner cards with Kroger and with Market Street. Uh, the best way to get involved with that, and I just remembered this over the weekend and we'll be sending out an e-blast for that, every year you have to re-enroll in the Kroger program. And I had forgotten about that because I just 
go on autopilot, but you go into your local store and you ask them, what do I need to do? Some of the stores will let you do it in the store, some will tell you to do it online. I did it online over the weekend, it took like five seconds. I just went in and re-entered that I wanted Legacy partnered with my um, reward program card and they do that. They also have a new cool app that you can get on your phone. I played with it this weekend as well. You pick out anything you know you're gonna be buying that week or that you have purchased. You put it into your app and then you scan your receipt and it automatically credits Legacy with the, the points for those items. So that's another way you just go to the app store and pick the bo box top app. Um, box tops, let's see, is this just our box top slide? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and also my favorite uh, punchline, uh, we do decorating here at the school. We do fall decorating, Christmas decorating. We try to do so a little something in the spring. If you were here last year, you may remember we had um, a little fall set up outside the main office here at the lower school. We do the same at the high school. We do Christmas trees. Uh, always looking for people to help with that as well. Let me know if you're interested or if that's your gift because I would love to gift someone with the blessing of decorating the school for everyone because we all get to enjoy the decorating, right? Registration, that's okay. Um, I already talked about most of these items. Um, pretty self-explanatory. We do the cards. Tom Thumb also has a card. I didn't mention that one. Um, something I do want to point out, we've made over $16,000 on those little box tops. I think that's incredible. Don't, I know it's kind of a pain sometimes, but cut them out. That's just, that's such an amazing number. And we will be having this come in October 14th. One of the fun things we do with this program is for the lower school and, and um, early ed people, they have a contest and each grade has a contest and the class that comes in with the most box tops gets to have a popsicle party. And they get to do that usually at recess and it's really sad if you're not the kid that has the popsicle on the slide, right? So you want your kids to, to uh, be the one that gets that popsicle party and you'll notice when you get your label, your baggie, it's gonna say what the teacher name is. Make sure you fill that out so your kid's teacher gets the, the credit for that. And then for fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth, they compete against each other, fifth versus sixth, seven versus eighth, and the winning grade gets to wear crazy socks one day to school. So that's always fun for them as well, and they get to express their creativity through their, their socks. Um, that's that. Amazon Smile, I don't know if y'all are familiar with this or not. This is an awesome way to just quickly make money for the school. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to realize Amazon's the way to go. To, you can buy literally anything on Amazon. And uh, if you go to Amazon Smile, there's a link there. A percentage of what you buy goes right back to Legacy and we get a check for that. Um, my favorite event of the year, the Kendra Scott event. Last year we did that in the spring. Uh, we had such an incredible turnout that Kendra Scott here in Plano offered us the first available day. We could pay, have our pick of any day of the year because our program did so great last year. Uh, we had our official LCA Kendra Scott's that you can have made when you're there. And uh, we raised over $5,000 that night for Legacy, and it's fun. And this year we're doing it on November 10th, so you can start your Christmas shopping and uh, give your husband his list for Christmas shopping. And this is an another great way. I mean, $5,000 in one night, so that's pretty awesome. And I got to meet Kendra when I went in to do that, to sign this up, which I had on sweats and a baseball cap, so it was kind of embarrassing, but I didn't get to meet her. PDQ night was a couple weeks ago, and it was so awesome. The staff and teachers came, and... Uh, called out orders and made shakes, and that's always a great way to kick off the year. Our next uh, Spirit Nights at Muya on October 12th, and I think the high school cheerleaders and drill team are going to be there that night, calling out orders and um, introducing themselves. And then our last one of the fa fall semester is going to be at Paleos here, Paleos here on Lebanon, uh, and the Muya on Maine, and we'll make sure that that information gets out. Anyone that has a gift that you feel like that's something you could help with, we're always looking for fun ways to get people in the door. That's why we did this stuff with the staff. That's why we're having the cheerleaders come in. That's another great way, uh, even to greet people when they come in and say, welcome, you know, go get your burger. And I think that's all for me. Um, do you want me to go ahead and go? Do I get, the, get to do the funny slide too? Awesome. Just a little, all that and a bag of chips. That's of course, but we do appreciate y'all being here. Um, if you have any questions at all, I know there's a lot of information that we've all just kind of on you today. We're all here and available to answer questions and take your name and your phone number so that we can text you the next time we're looking for extra hands for sure. Thanks.
This is one slide I just wanted to share with you guys before we close. Um, these are some of the things that the money we have brought in have been able to purchase for the school. And this is not a complete list. Um, a bus, the marquee out front, um, new iPads for the students to use in the classrooms, um, playground equipment, um, spirit items. We're going to be giving out rally towels at homecoming for everybody. It's going to be awesome. Um, and even our new live streaming equipment where grandparents can watch your children's Christmas program from another state if they are there. And that is such a great thing. They offer that at sporting events, programs at the school. So that is definitely a, a, an amazing gift. Um, and then last but not least is we have your official legacy parent-teacher fellowship t-shirts for sale. Um, if you aren't able to get it today and you want one, they will be available in the spirit shop after this, um, after today. So they'll be available until they're gone. Um, they're $14. Um, they're super soft and they're cute. And you know, you show your support for the for the parent teacher fellowship. Um, I just again want to thank you all so much for coming and sharing your time this morning with us. Um, we really appreciate you, and we hope that you decide to get plugged in. On the table where you came in, there is a sheet that has um, volunteer information as well as the link to sign up online. That is truly the best way to, for us to be able to contact you in all aspects that you're interested in. So, um, Mr. McGee, did you want to close us in prayer? Okay. Well, I don't know about you, but I was tired just hearing of all the different events and activities that we are engaged in. And I don't know what it is, but September is really an intense month, especially with homecoming early this year and Grandparents Day. So that means we need your help. So if you are not currently plugged in, please find the ministry, the service opportunity that interests you and jump right in because we need the help. So. Uh, Thank you, PTF, for a very interesting um, uh, program where we get to learn of all the different ways to serve. I'll share this one thought, and then I'll uh, close this in prayer. <clears throat> My friend Ross Chelseth is the longtime head of a Christian school in the Seattle, Washington area. And he said this at a meeting uh, that I attended last year. He said, service is the rent we pay for the privilege of living in God's creation. I thought that was kind of a neat uh, thought. Service is the rent we pay for the privilege of living in God's creation. And really service is what PTF is all about. With that, let's pray. Our Father, we, um, we do understand the grace you have bestowed upon us undeservedly. And we are humbled by that fact and that you would love us and provide for our salvation without any effort on our part because we cannot earn salvation. Our salvation is a free gift from you that we must simply accept. And so, Father, we don't serve for the purpose of earning your favor. Rather, we serve in grateful response for your provision. And Father, I thank you for the women and men who give unselfishly, not out of obligation, not out of boredom, not out of anything other than an opportunity to give back what is not even ours, but is yours. So Father, we, uh, we thank you for the many opportunities that you have given us to serve Legacy Christian Academy. And Father, we, we seek to serve you well because it is your school. It is not ours. It does not belong to the faculty and staff or the parents. It is your school. And so our motivation to seek, to serve, is simply in grateful response to your grace and mercy. Father, we ask that you would take our efforts and multiply them 
and that we would see the many ministry opportunities we have before us. Go with us now as we go back to our homes or our places of business, wherever our paths may be. Help us to be your ambassadors and a light unto the world. For it's in son, your son's name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming.